Hi, it's Jesper here. The topic of this data architecture video is how to design for scale and automation. What does data, scale and automation have in common? Well, the answer will be clear at the end of this video. Let's start with unpacking data. Why is data important? It's because the world is becoming increasingly digitized. At work, at home, while we sleep, while we exercise, digital is infiltrating all aspects of life. So what has digital got to do with it? After all, why don't we get to talk about data, scale and automation? It will be clear in a second. Let's unpack digital and remove the fluff. Or, as Hans Hoffman said, he was really paraphrasing Picasso, remove the unnecessary so that only the necessary remains. Removing the unnecessary from digital leaves us with the necessary. The two atomic building blocks, which everything digital is built on, zeros and ones. And zeros and ones are data. Everything in a digital world is data. Think of data as a lubricant in a digital system, where data quality is the amount of lubricant. The higher the data quality, the more lubricant and the faster it goes. And speaking of lubrication, what is the F word in the digital world? Friction. For example, do you know how much petrol is used to propel a car forward? Assuming that is a petrol fuel car, of course. Between 10 to 15 percent, unless it's fitted with start-stop technology then it might be as high as 30%. The rest is friction and hence waste. This means that friction can be added to the certainties of life alongside of death and taxes. Here is the kicker. When we remove friction, we get scale. In the digital world, there is no friction. It is frictionless, and this is the reason we want digital. We have now established the relationship between data and scale. So let's unpack scale. What is scale? It's a bit like being a teenager. Everyone talks about it, but no one is really doing it. Scale goes to the heart of growth. But it's not any kind of growth. For example, if we grow a business by $1 and it costs us 90 cents to do so, we're talking about a growth rate of 10%. Scale is a different kind of growth which breaks this relationship. Scale is growth at near zero cost. Scale allows an organization to grow without acquiring more assets or employing more people. Well, that sounds great. So why are we only talking about it? Why are we not doing it? Well, we are, sort of, through euphemisms like digital transformation. IDC forecasts that global spending on digital transformation between 2020 and 2023 will reach a staggering $6.8 trillion, that's US dollars. It equates to a third of the entire USA economy. With that much spend, we must be creating a lot of scale, but not according to the experts. According to McKinsey, 84% of digital transformation projects fail. And Gartner believes that only 1 in 10 organizations 
are able to realize their digital ambitions. So what is going on? Let's get to the heart of the matter. Any system that was not designed for scale will never achieve scale, no matter what we do. I realize this is a strong and opinionated statement, but there is no point in putting lipstick on a pig. There is no point in trying to unravel what we have already built. For example, if we want a data-driven and scalable CRM, we need to build a new one. Building new does not itself guarantee success. For example, if we build a new CRM using the same mindset and thinking that we created it with, we will recreate what we have. That is a CRM that is not scalable, which brings us to the key critical success factor, a mindset change, a data mindset change, where data takes a center stage. It means we cannot define requirements in a way that we did in the past by unpacking a process or a function. It probably makes sense now that we need to unpack data because if scale depends on data, it makes no sense to unpack a process or a function. The mindset shift is big because it contradicts a lot of what we have learned. This mindset shift is especially difficult, but that's the subject of a future video. For now, I'm going to share two frameworks. The first one you've probably heard of, people, process, and technology. It has been around since the 1960s, which makes it more than 50 years old. It forms the basis of what I call the analog operating model, as it was designed for the analog world. It focuses on productivity and efficiency by removing friction. We have already established there is no friction in the digital world. So this model and mindset is not going to work. But if you replace process with data, everything changes. We shift the focus from efficiency and productivity to scale and automation and create the foundation for the digital operating model. This is very interesting and provides a theoretical basis, the why and the what for data and scale. But how do we do it? That is a million dollar question, which we will unpack in part two of this video. In part two, we will unpack a call center and a software trial process and show exactly how to design for scale and automation. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See you in the next video.